And hey guys, what is up? It is the Gas Again Guy here today to bring you some Pokemon Sun and Moon news. And I apologize very much because I haven't been keeping up to date with all of this news as it's been coming out. And this is probably going to be going back until news, probably till I think. I don't know exactly when this news came out. I haven't paid it. I just knew that when it did come out, I was really hyped about it. So let's start off with the first thing, which was the Coral Coral leak. I believe that came first, which was two new Pokemon. Um, one is a puppy rock type Pokemon called Iwanko, who will have the abilities Keen Eye, Vital Spirit, and so far the only known moves that he will have is Bite. But basically, the details are: is Iwanko was the first revealed hidden away in the trailer uh, released on Koro Koro and was released one week later. Iwanko looks cute, but is really gutsy. No matter how much it gets beaten up, it will keep standing up to fight its enemies again until it beats them. Um, it's great. Uh, it greets people by presenting rocks attached to its neck against them, which is kind of powerful. The recipient, the body's small, but it has a hidden secret. All right, so I don't know if you know this, but in the same magazine, it also said that Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio would all be getting some kind of weird hidden secret along with them. I don't know if this is going to be Mega Evolution or maybe Burst Evolution is actually going to be a thing, because if you look at the... Um, new trainer images they're they're actually holding some kind of weird like bangle or whatever that's different to the mega evolution bangle but i don't know exactly maybe it's just like a revamp of like design you know uh, let's, let's just see what happens because character customization was confirmed to be in this game in a very kind of looked over scene in the e3 uh stream where they were doing the battle royale but let's we're getting way ahead of ourselves all right so the next one is nekuala so far it has not been released officially but it is the normal type half awake pokemon and it has an ability called definite sleep and the only thing we know about this ability i don't know if it's going to come on with like go later on with his like evolutions or anything but basically this means that the only status effect he can be affected by is sleep so i don't know if this thing can like maybe this guy could be set up later with swords dance or something i don't know i'm not really into the whole battle scene com like completely i i'm I really don't think of this Pokemon. He looks kind of cute. Um, for a long time, everyone's been wanting a Koala Pokemon. I know that for sure. And, um, yeah. And we're just going to keep on to the theme with the released Pokemon. Because we have three new ones. Which are Pikpek, Young Goose, and Grubbin. So we're going to start off with Pikpek, which is the Pokemon that we saw in the first kind of like Pokemon 20 trailer or whatever. When they saw like all the behind the scenes stuff. And we saw, like, the beginning 3B model of it. And it's just going to be a normal flying type, like the general, like, basic starter flying Pokemon, you know? And it's going to be the Woodpecker Pokemon. And the details are, uh, let's see, Pikpek can strike 16 times a second with its beak. Uh, the strikes are powerful enough to not only drill through hard wood, but even shatter stone. The noises made by their blows can signal others... Some, uh, some of these signals have been identified as warnings, signals as greetings among allies. Pickback trainers have grown to recognize them as well. These Pokemon drilled holes into trees, uh, store food, and holes. Wait, store food in the holes. Um, they also like small glittering objects and will tuck them away in food stores. It's said often to something lost, something missed, check inside a Pickpack nest, Pikpek will attack distant opponents with zipping seeds from their shots. From their shots? What? Oh. From these shots, having enough strength to invent. So maybe this will turn into... I, I don't want to say it's going to turn into a grass flying type, but uh, that, I think the seed shooting might become a later thing. Maybe he will take on, like, a bigger bird form and have, like, a little, um... What are they? Like a pea shooter snout? I don't know. And the next one is Donald Trump. I mean, Young Goose, which will be the normal type of loitering Pokemon. Um, his abilities will be Stake Out and Strong Jaw, which Strong Jaw makes me think that he is going to evolve kind of like how we had Tyrant look kind of goofy. But as soon as Tyrant Trump came, he was a powerhouse. He was a force to be reckoned with. And um, he's just like my favorite fossil Pokemon, especially his shiny version. It's just wow. All right. So the Pokemon was shown at E3, along with available. All right, there was something that happened at E3 with this Pokemon, which was when he came on screen after they caught him in the Pokedex, they 
kind of like cut away from it. I don't know if there's something in the Pokedex that we're not supposed to know about, or maybe it mentioned a Pokemon that we're not supposed to know about again. Um, or maybe it has multiple evolutions or something. Uh, maybe, I don't know. This thing kind of, like, I feel a little bit off about it. But basically, the, def or the uh, Pokedex description of the Pokemon is, Young Goose is a big eater uh, that is never satisfied. The majority of its long body is given over to stomach and digestion. Ew. It's swift, always, uh, it's swift, so it's always hungry. It has a strong fangs, and when it can crush and consume the hardest of objects, each young goose chooses its own particular route and searching for prey. It stalks along the route, searching for food until it's exhausted, at which point it drops to sleep wherever it may be. Uh, it's thought that these Pokemon decide their routes based on safety, so that they... Uh, so, so there's no risk of falling asleep at any time. Young goose is... A, not a Pokemon that is native to Alola region. Wait, what? It's not native to the Alola region. It was brought to the region with a deal of explosive po population of the certain po of certain other Pokemon. That 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 right there. It deals with the explosive population of a certain other Pokemon, and now young goose are commonly seen in the Alola region. So not only are we know that there's another Pokemon, but Young Goose isn't even from the Alola region, so that's just mind boggling. So, which region is this guy supposed to be from? Is there like, holy crap! I didn't, I, I didn't read the, I didn't read any of this before, like right now. I just sat down, was like, I need to get this video done. I need to get this out. I need to hurry up and get caught up so I don't end up having to have updates from like two months ago coming out when like Pokemon Sun and Moon finally come out, whatever. So next we have Grubbin, which is. Kind of the starter poke, like starting route Pokemon that I'm kind of getting excited for because I, I think he's going to turn into a beetle or something. And he, yeah, his name is Grubbin. He's the bug type larva Pokemon. And his ability will be Swarm, just like, I don't know, I think uh, Combi maybe or uh, Vespa Queen. Uh, Grubbin relies on its sturdy jaws as a weapon in battle and is a tool for burrowing through the earth. Grubbin loves electricity, which is why it can be found near power plants. Are we gonna have a bug electric type? It's um, it's by wrapping tree branches and the sticky threads that spruce from its mouth. Grubbin can swing around from action. So are we gonna have like a bug electric type that's a beetle? Because I'm still I I want more, I want like a ghost like spider Pokemon because that would be pretty sweet. And on top of that, I don't know where exactly these leaks came from. Apparently they came from uh. Let's see. Since ancient times, Sigalia has been honored as the most serious time. Um, apparently, when Sigalia and Lunala use their mo like ultimate moves, it activates a special form, which for Sigalia is called the Radiant Sun form, and for Lunala it is called the Full Moon phase. Which makes me question because um, now I wonder because usually there is a third Pokemon in every region, and I was I saw some artwork before. I believe it was a an eclipse like Cerberus kind of wolf Pokemon, which kind of looked cool, but I'm not sure about that um, because there is, there is a Norse mythology. I think I think it's Norse mythology. I'm not 100% correct. Don't quote me on that. But basically, it's about two wolves who chase the sun and moon around, and when they catch it at the same time, it causes an eclipse. So I'm just I, that's as much as I know. I don't know exactly the mythology, what it's from, but I just know that story. And Magierna has finally had a little uh, release trailer thing. We get to see it in a double battle, and we find out it has an ability called Soul Heart, which I believe ups its attack or special attack whenever uh, its teammate dies in a double battle. I'm not sure if it's like. I don't exactly, I'm not exactly sure how all of those like moves happen or whatever. But, curiously you know, Magiuna is the still fairy type as the artificial Pokemon. And Magiuna was first revealed in February 2016 conjunction with the upgrading Volcanion in Ignatius Magiernia movie, which, oh, Ingenious Magiernia movie, and it's a man-made Pokemon created by humans 500 years ago. It possesses a metallic text conformed, it was made by humanoid hands, and it was a mythical Pokemon. And it has the attack Fleur Cannon. Which I believe is French for flower, which makes people believe that we are going to be back. We are going to be going back to Kalos at some point because there was a few things left untied, like the train station you can't use, or 
like stuff like that you know but then again at the same time there was the whole mystery in diamond and pearl that was never solved between the two mansions and why they have like the same statue and what's the exact mystery between all the ghosts floating around which i really want to know about hopefully when if there's a remake coming out i really hope they explain that so let's see um other than that the only other news we know about well the only other stuff that i want to go about that or want to talk about right now for the most part is um there is the new pokedex which is a actual rotom we have a rotom living in our pokedex and in order to create the most efficient pokedex professor kukui had a rotom inhibit it i uh, hadn't a po <laughs> i can't speak had rotom inhibited it in order to give it the best experience the rotom pokedex is more than just the pokedex it is rather it, uh rather it contains features such as showing you your next location advice on where to go next and so forth which I think is pretty cool because people who come to the Pokemon series brand new who will be choosing this for the first time really don't know where to go next. I remember in, I believe, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire when those games originally came out, I had a hard time figuring out how to, uh, like, get the, get access to the museum. Or not get access, to, yeah, get access to the museum and on top of that, get past Slateport City. But on top of that, it will turn the bottom screen into a map. It will show your player and your destination, I believe. Um, can be used on the bottom screen while it is a real-time view of the game map. It will show you moving through the route city as well as mark any... Oh, it will mark any interesting areas for you to visit. So I'm guessing that will be like any kind of cool scenery or anything. Um, yeah, and also, we know that when the... When the game comes out the Pokedex will be able to have a QR code feature, which basically means that when you're in your Pokedex, you can pull up a thing that will open the QR camera, and you'll be able to scan it, and you'll get an event from that. Um, I don't know exactly how it works fully, but I do know that it will be region locked to whatever region you're in, which I'm kind of disappointed about, because, as you know, Jap uh, <laughs> Japan... Uh, Japan usually gets most of the cool uh, little events so like so far right now they're the only ones getting the Magirna event that is coming out with the movie and oh wait no apparently it yeah apparently this uh, event is coming out in America in late 2016 but Japan will be getting it on July 18th to September 30th so, yeah, apparently it's also going to be coming with a ribbon, and we'll know the moves Flash Cannon, Flare Cannon, Lucky Chan, and Helping Hand. It'll have any nature, and the data receiving a lovely place. Oh, yeah. Any nature, data receiving, blah, blah, blah. And it comes from a lovely place. Apparently it had a fateful encounter. Um, the ability will, of course, be Soul Heart. No one knows what the OT or the ID is going to be, and it comes in a Cherish Ball. Um, other than that, I guess the last thing we can cover is... There is going to be a new battle mo uh, mode called Battle Royale, and so far the rules of Battle Royale are the rules for this are kind of simple. As soon as one player has lost each of their Pokemon, and then the battle is over, to determine the winner, the results are tallied up by who is based on how many Pokemon each player has managed to take out, as well as how many they have left. So basically, this means as soon as the first person gets knocked out of the game it will just end and whoever has the most kills and like or whoever has the most knockouts and the most um surviving pokemon will win and of course i really don't know how this feels i think they should just gone out for a flat out free for all 4v4 last one standing wins but who knows maybe you could like adjust the rules later on like we've done before and yeah um we already talked about we you know about the yeah um I guess now we should talk about the, uh, what is it, the um, gameplay that came out during E3, which basically started off with pretty cool um, footage of our character standing in his room. And I'm going to pull this up real quick, so hold on a second. So the trailer started off with Reggie just introducing everybody. Um, you know, Lily. Alright, so... We're going to start off with... Alright, so I'm just watching. I'm going by the trailer right now. Just going to tell you what's happening and maybe show the clips later on. Yeah, we know Rowlet, the, the starter. Okay, Lunala. 
known shadow shield ability. Okay, your lower region is shown a little bit at nighttime and during day. Um, all right. Uh, professor Kukui has been confirmed to be the professor. I knew it. I basically called it. Everyone thought that the guy in the orange or yellow coat was going to be the professor. He was not. Lily is the assistant. Kukui's mystery assistant. I believe the only hint that we've got towards her was flowers, I believe. Which makes me think that maybe she's a relative to AZ. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so the little Kukui have a searching around. Our rival will be known as How. Our, our, sorry, our friend is now called Howl. Um, for a fact, the trainers will always be in the background while battling. Um, let's see, let's scroll a little further. We have oh yeah, a new high-res map has come out of the Alola region. And it does kind of show you what we're going to be exploring. There is a kind of like closed-off community on the fourth island I want I'm, I'm calling it the fourth island because I'm assuming that's gonna be the last one we're gonna be going on but at the same time there's also a kind of like island with a bean sprout or something behind the second island or the third island it's on the top right and it's just like shrouded in a little bit of clouds I don't know exactly what's going on there maybe it's going to be a event that's happening with legendaries I don't know but I have a feeling that some point during the gameplay that um all the Pokemon that we're getting through the 20th anniversary giveaways are going to, like, start events or maybe get us some extra stuff in the game, hopefully. Um, let's talk about, let's see, uh, what else is there? Scroll through the video. Alright, so the gameplay footage starts off with you just standing in your room, you know. The guy just walks around, looks at the TV, go downstairs, and... Yeah, the house looks a lot... It just looks more like a house than we've actually seen in the games. Um, there's a kitchen and there's a table. There's It's a nice environment. And then we see the woman that everybody called me out on saying that it was not going to be your mom. It's your mom. Get over it, people. Called it. Knew it. Um, she has a pet Meowth. I think so far a lot of... I believe most of the moms of the Pokemon games at this point have now had a... Poke... Like a... Um, cat Pokemon. I believe Dawn's mom in the games and in the anime had a per uh, a per ugly or a Gale Meow. Um, I know that your mom in X and Y had a Rhydon or Rhyhorn. No, right Rhydon. And had a friendly little uh, bird Pokemon. I can't remember the name of it. F Fletchling, who woke you up in the morning. The uh, I'm, sen I'm sensing that now there's going to be a, like a pattern in that, from the future games that our moms are going to have like Pokemon or at least like little like friendly things and it seems like we're going to be starting off in the middle of the island so they cut to them walking around in the glass and there is a new battle format on the top and bottom screen not really a format but a layout so basically what you can do now is on the bottom screen it will show your Pokemon and the opponent's Pokemon or the wild Pokemon and on the bottom it shows run, on the right it shows the fight, and on the left it shows Pokemon and bag and I think on Y it just lets you bring up Pokeballs but basically what you can do is you can click on the opponent's Pokemon or the opposing Pokemon and it will show you what their stats are at exactly like how if they've had any kind of speed buffs or debuffs and stuff like that and you can constantly check on that and apparently it will also show you the typings and what they are strong and weak against I remember someone mentioning that but that's only a Pokemon that you've like seen multiple times um let's see and they get a few encounters and they catch them all and it shows that the Pokedex has a kind of new feature that will always show you Pokemon that are related to them or what they will evolve into and it shows that Ladybug will be on the beginning routes, which I don't know how I feel about because Ladybug is just kind of a weird, like, Pokemon. The Rotom Pokedex, of course. Um, then it shows the guy... Alright, so a cool thing that's going to be happening is when you walk up to a, an opposing trainer, just so you know if, like, if it's a trainer that's going to want to fight you, when you get, I think, one step away from their view, the screen will kind of have a zoom, not a zoom in effect, but kind of like the top and bottom will fade to black a little bit, kind of like a cinematic, kind of like something is close by kind of thing. And it's pretty cool. It's a nice thing to know that 
it will tell you when you're near a trainer. Um, it's all oh, it's also great to say that apparently every NPC trainer will also have their own model. I don't know if they're going to be sh like using multiple of them, but they will also be shown in battle. Um, there's a Caterpie. Um, let's see. One thing I would have asked during the uh, panel at the treehouse is there's like a little eight year old kid running around with a uh, young goose, but. We all know for a fact that you have to be at the age of 10 to uh, have a Pokemon, yet at the same time, in Black and White 2, I believe, there were, like, preschoolers with level 60 or 70 Pokemon. So, let's see. Um, next, we see him running up to the village after catching a... Uh, what? Pick, 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 pick? And they're going to be starting some kind of I knew that I knew there was going to be some kind of um like initiation or something involved, but basically they're going to a festival where they're going to be celebrating the Pokemon trainer's new journey by having him start off with a battle. So I, I kind of called it, kind of didn't at the same time. You know, it is a tradition that Pokemon trainers do do on a new journey or something, but basically, what. Basically, just the guy in the yellow shirt or whatever, Hawa, I believe his name is, will be uh, setting up a battle between you and How or who, or whatever what the heck the friendly trainer's name is. And, yeah, I believe that's most of it. I know at some point someone suspected a uh, Puplio at level 7 maybe becoming a water fairy type because it learns a fairy type move. And also, um, Lily... At some point in the cutscene, her bag shakes, which implies that there's a Pokemon in there, which again I think might be A Z Floet, but then again it says Pew. And I believe we know I believe there is a Pokemon that has been said in like anime and the games to do like a pew sound before. I'm not hundred percent sure. But it also shows how having the weaker poke or no. Yeah, the weaker Pokemon to your starter. So I don't know if it's just like you have three rivals, or, or two rivals, and whatever, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, then they go right to the battle, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, the last thing they show is Battle Royale, and this is where they kind of brushed over the whole um, you're going to have character customization thing, because at this point, you see it almost, you see a bunch of characters wearing their own separate clothing. Uh, I think they have different backpacks and stuff, too. But basically, they're just like, yeah, um, some of the people might have noticed that uh, all the trainers are wearing different clothing, uh, so what's that all about? And the guys are like, sharp eye, even though it was extremely obvious. And they're like, yeah, low-key, we're going to have character customization. It's not a big deal, but this is a huge deal because I know everybody missed this. It was a nice thing to express your character and show that what your character looked like was pretty kind of like self-expressive, you know? You wanted your trainer to look like you, but not just in a skin tone or something. You wanted your character to look like you in a style that you would have dressed up as. And yeah, it looks pretty sweet. And that's most of the news of what's happened, what's coming out, and I guess next step will be releasing a group speculation trailer, just like last time, where we will have Mikey282 and uh, Lord Chuckleton III joining us in on a little conversation, probably mostly about the mini-map or whatever that's coming out. And also, um, let me, I want to see if I can pull up this video, because... Um, last time on the spec, I think it was the group speculation or the, like, separate speculation that we had. Someone made a obvious kind of, like, point out that I screwed up. So I will be giving a shout out to him once I could find the comment. Um, let's see. Channel. Community. Comments. Um, yes. At Lightsaver, uh, Lightsaver said, uh during the Pokemon Sun and Moon trailer speculation that the two Pokemon, there are two Pokemon centers on the main island that is supposed to be Oahu and which is going to be the island we're starting on um but yeah man other than that there's nothing really to add on to the end of this video other than 
this is going to be the last week of the Pokemon Soul Link. I, uh, but I've pretty much been announcing that on every social media that we've had. And um, I would like suggestions for maybe the next gameplay to do. I will be continuing Gadangan Romp very soon. Um, I've been holding out on that, even though I should have been recording, but I, just the Soul Link. And I thought uploading five days a week would be pretty easy, but it's been pro it's proven more difficult, especially when you're off uh, off schedule when you're, when you're supposed to be recording and uploading. But we managed to get through it. We have gone through 40 episodes of the Soul Link, and I really like. I want to pre I, I want you all to know how much I appreciate you checking out the series and just giving feedback to the few who actually did. And I would like to welcome the new subscribers that may be slowly coming in from the, my old account, and hopefully they're enjoying the new content. So, yeah. That's basically about it. Um, if I think of anything else, I'll put it. I'll add it on to the next video. So, until next time.